Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Impactful Conversations. Hope you guys are all well. Just waiting for Sanya to join us quickly and then we'll be live. I hope that you all are doing well in lockdown season and that is treating you well. Thank you so much for joining today. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. I hope you guys are excited. Just, let's just give Sanya a second quickly. I'm sure she'll join us just now. Just waves to all of you who are here so long. Thanks so much for all the support. <laughs> cool. Just giving Sanya a second quickly. And then we'll be live in a sec. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining in. I hope that you guys are all doing well. This is going to be great. I'm really excited for this one. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to learn so much. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. If, and I hope that you guys are too as well. Cool, Sun News here. Let's get started. All right. Just add her in quickly. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm well, thanks. I'm well, thanks. I'm uh, very excited for this episode. Me too. And, uh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, for agreeing to do the episode and um, for agreeing to come onto the show. I'm really excited for what we're going to chat about today, um, and I think it's going to be really, really educational for you know everybody watching, including myself as well. So I hope that, uh, <laughs> I hope that you're excited as well. But um, Sanyu, just to uh, start us off. Um, you would know from watching previous lives that typically how we start this off is, you know, you tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, who are you? Mm. Where did you grow up? What did you study? What do you do? And what are you passionate about? Okay. So first of all, I'd just like to thank you so much for letting me be part of this. This is so exciting. Yeah. I have been enjoying the conversations you have been having with um everybody or your guests so it's been it's been lovely and i love the fact that they're recorded so that <laughs> you can go back and watch them if you've missed a live so i really thank you thank you so much for for having me um but yeah my name is sanyu sanyu Simatimba. i was born in uganda mm-hmm. and i have been in south africa since 1999 so i'd like to think of myself as a ugandan south african but i love south africa but i love Love, 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 love Uganda. I'm Ugandan <laughs> at heart, but take an appreciation for South Africa. So, um, awesome. yeah, so I am, let me question my age. Okay, I'm 24. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I am turning 25, but I'm 24 currently. And nice. I studied, I am a graphic designer by profession. So I studied, I did a BA in mm-hmm. graphic design. And then I had, I did an honors in visual communication. Mm-hmm. And then I did a postgraduate diploma in design thinking and innovation. That's awesome. So, yeah, I think I think it's been interesting um, trying to figure out what I was passionate about. But, yeah, yeah I am extremely passionate about um, the practical application of design and or design thinking, mm-hmm. specifically within the space of education. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I think, I think like, how do we implement design or design thinking within mm-hmm. education? Um, mm-hmm. um, that's what I'm passionate about. And I'm currently working at the African Leadership Academy as awesome. a entrepreneurial leadership teaching fellow. Yeah, so yeah. I'm teaching. Awesome. Yes. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, I mean, we, we, we've, we decided that we're going to talk specifically about design thinking, um, mm. you know, in, in two parts. One the concept of it so briefly we we dive into what actually is it and then you know secondly the actual implementation of it and how mm. we should implement the concept in in an african context in particular so as a start you know for for a layman's person what <laughs> is design thinking what is it all about i love that for a layman's person i think people overcomplicate everything so <laughs> to simplify it which is yeah. what i love yeah. 
Design thinking is a creative problem solving tool that is human centered at the core. So it's all about trying to figure out how can we best create a solution or product or anything um, Mm -hmm. for the user. So it's just a problem solving tool, Mm -hmm. a creative problem solving tool that's human centered. That's awesome. That's amazing. So how do you think that, you know, problem solving tool serves as a solution based approach in, in Africa? Okay, that's quite an interesting question. Hectic, um, hectic question. Yeah, hectic <laughs> question. But I think, I think that I could. I don't know if. I, okay, so design thinking mm-hmm. is solution based, right? So yes. you cannot not have a solution when you're using design thinking. I yes. think that um, how it solves as a problem solving tool is that it is based around empathy. So empathizing with your user, um, awesome. trying to figure out what your user needs, trying to figure out um, what else. So you normally have like a primary need and then what Mm -hmm. are the surrounding needs of that user and how can you best create some sort of solution um, that would cater number one for that one specific need and then how how could you um, figure out how to um, design a solution that would also cater those surrounding needs or accommodate the surrounding Mm. needs. So it's it's human-centered at the core, like I said. So. Yeah, I hope I answered the question. Yeah, you did. You did. You okay. did. For, for a lay, for coming from a ladies' person. That's <laughs> really, I can, I can assure you that, that you did. So tell me, how did you come to this field? I mean, to develop this passion? Where did this, what would yeah. you say is the root of all of this? Where did this come from? Wow, it's been a long, long journey. Lots of tears. I don't know. Being mm. 20 is tough. So, um, <laughs> so, I, so I studied graphic design. And yeah. I um, was like, okay, cool. I love design. And I think in my third year or second year, I started <clears throat> just trying to sort of refine your designing like niche or technique or like what is it that mm. you specialize in, right? So mm. I think that by s- end of third year, I realized that like, okay, cool. Um, I have this clean, I have a very clean design style, but yeah. like I identified like as a Pan-Africanist. So mm-hmm. I then began to realize, I was, I was like, okay, so I identify myself as a Pan-Africanist, but my designing style or visual communication style completely contradicts what that is. So yeah. I sort of went through an existential crisis, um, <laughs> literally like trying to figure out what is African design? How am I a designer? It's like, how am I African? It was, it was terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then in my honors year, I went down mm-hmm. that rabbit hole. So trying to figure out what are African designers doing like around Africa, like what's happening in Uganda, Ghana, Nigeria, all of those countries, but mm-hmm. around or in Africa, but I couldn't, I couldn't find out what people were doing. So I literally yeah. didn't know like what, what was the, 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 the African like visual communication style, like yeah. the, not, not the cliche one. So we can identify, okay, cool. This is Swiss based design, or this is like a specific design, but I couldn't identify what African design was. And I was trying to yeah. like embody something or like, I was mm. trying to like copy something. Mm. Um, and then I asked my teachers, obviously they struggled as well because um, this, the education system that we have literally just taught us about Swiss based design or mm. I don't know, minimalist movement. So they mm. were also stuck in shame. You can't blame them because they were taught the same way. So yes. I went yeah. and I did research, I did a whole bunch of stuff, and then I decided, okay, cool, um, let me create a platform. So I created an online yeah. platform for African creatives, upcoming creatives called the African Collective. Mm. And I was just like, let me just research and contact people and say, okay, cool, if you're a designer, if you're a photographer, if you're some sort of African visual communicator, can I just get yeah. your stuff and post it on my platform? So mm. that's sort of how it started. And awesome. then, then I realized, okay, cool, this is nice, but I was still struggling with why am I, why haven't I been taught any of this stuff? Like, what is African yeah. design? I was like, what's happening? So then I realized, okay, it's probably the education system because yes. if my lecturers are struggling, if my, my, my lecturers didn't know how to mark me, they didn't know how to mm. coach me and they, they are brilliant. So yes. I realized I had a conversation with them. They're like, no, it's the system. Yeah. So I was like, okay, cool. So obviously there's a flaw in the system. Okay. Mm. And then I went and started researching like other curriculum in other universities, um, other design institutions, same thing, not really yeah. being taught how to 
designed for the African market. So yes. if you look at design and design thinking as a tool, it's extremely powerful, extremely, yeah. extremely, extremely powerful. And in Africa, there aren't like, there are so many things that we need to fix. <laughs> There are so many things that we need to fix. Like Africa is like a landmine for like opportunities or problems to like solve. But mm. so I was like, okay, cool. If there's so many problems and there are, we have this tool, we have design, we have design thinking. I, I've seen the power of it. Like an, I've experienced it. I'm a designer. I've seen how people have applied it overseas. Mm. Why are we not applying this here? Or yes. why are we not like people we don't have it we have the tool but we're not teaching people how to use a tool yes yeah. then i realized oh okay cool if we could teach people how to apply design and or design thinking mm -hmm. in africa what yeah. would africa look like if students could practically apply what they have learned in their communities then i was Absolutely. like whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, cool. <laughs> and in the middle of that i was supposed to go to canada my visa got rejected so i was like oh, going through a lot you know, a lot was, was happening trying, yeah right so i was trying to like figure out so eventually yeah. i got so i get selected at a couple of universities and then i went and um, I, I was lecturing last year. So I got a lecturing job at Vega. Mm -hmm. That was an amazing experience. Um, and I started like teaching, obviously. And then I had the opportunity to sort of work on the curriculum. And yeah. that's when I started realizing, okay, cool. I thought that my university was the only university that didn't really focus on African design. And mm -hmm. I think that the argument would say, yes, we do focus on African design because, look, we put an example of an African font. But it's like, no. Yeah. How can we apply this in Africa? So exactly. writing mm -hmm. the curriculum, realizing that was happening. And then I'm like, okay, cool. No, we need to, we need to fix the curriculum. We need to fix how, um, we need to fix the way that we teach students, yeah. the way that we teach design. And then yeah. I don't think that it should just be that we teach design thinking in design institutions, but if you could teach design thinking in high schools or um, mm. tertiary institutions, just as a problem solving tool, and then teach them how to practically apply it at home, I think that everybody could benefit from it, not just the students, but the communities that the students happen to live within. So yeah. practicalizing that skill so that we can apply it, because there's no point in learning how to do something, like learning how mm. to do something at school, and then you have the theory, you understand how it works, but you don't know how to apply it back home. There's, yeah. there's no point. It's a waste of yeah. time, energy, but, money, resources. So, yeah. So then I've, I've always wanted to work at the African Leadership Academy. Mm. I applied like twice and I got rejected. Mm. Um, but by God's grace, <laughs> I got yeah. in because um, with what the African, Leadership, the African Leadership Academy like aligns with what I believe in. And yeah. they had they have a subject called entrepreneurial leadership mm. that uses um, a design thinking tool called build that literally teaches students how to solve complex problems, like identify issues in their community. And then mm -hmm. we give them the tools and we teach them how to apply them back home. So we have projects mm. and like one of the projects was identify what's happening back home come up with a solution. We're going to do problem solving. We're going to figure it out. You're going to um, mm. do have interviews and then you're going to come up with some, some sort of solution. And then if you want to pilot your idea, we give you like a small fund, a grant, yep. and you can mm. go back home and do it. Unfortunately, it's Corona. So the kids have like got their grants, but know that they're getting their grants, but they can't really apply them back home. But normally they could, yeah. they could go and apply them back home. We have um, workshops called build in a box that, give students the opportunity to apply a module mm. within the subject I teach and they go and teach other students how to apply design thinking um, mm -hmm. in their communities. They give them um, entrepreneurial skills. So yeah, okay. it's like teaching students how to be entrepreneurs, teaching them how to be ethical leaders because mm -hmm. Africa needs ethical leaders. Absolutely. And then using design thinking, constantly using design thinking. Um, mm. So yeah, so that's literally... The birth of the passion. The birth of the passion. And the manifestation as well. So, I mean, yes. tell me, you know, what does it feel like to go and teach, right, in a yeah. field that isn't as appreciated as, as it should be, right? So, mm, you're coming in, I get into, what you mean. into an institution, right, African Leadership Academy, yeah. right, which embraces those values. But mm. what is it like to come in and teach and to try and get those principles across 
for people who haven't heard of these kinds of principles or haven't thought in this way before what what sort mm -hmm. of lessons have you learned in that process um of starting that journey i think that of course it's difficult and um i think that if you can show if you're passionate about what you're teaching mm -hmm. and you can show your students how yeah. powerful the, whatever it is that you are teaching regardless it yes. could even just be cleaning right you could teach yeah. if you're passionate about it they will pick up on it and they will be like That's oh really my good. word this is actually so cool so you just That's have to good. show that like you have to be passionate about it so i think yeah. that because i'm i'm extremely passionate about design design thinking um yeah. and i think it it goes in like how i prep for my lessons and um yeah i think the students are able to see that and if you, i show it's good to show them examples of how that specific tool has worked you know like mm -hmm. okay cool i'm teaching you this thing i'm showing you how this works and mm -hmm. it's not just something that you're learning in class right i want to show you what other people have done so i think what i've done for my students it's important to contextualize what you're teaching I think yeah. it's important to show students, okay, cool, this is what you're learning. This is how you can use what you have learned and this mm. is how you can change like your community or whatever it is. So That's really good. Yeah, I think I think okay. for me, um maybe it's cuz I don't want to say I'm oblivious to how people feel about what I'm teaching. But I'm like if you're in my class, we're going to have <laughs> so much fun. I'm going to show you about how amazing design is. And sometimes I like freak out and I'm like look at this and look at how cool this is and look yeah. at what's happening here in Ghana and Uganda and look mm. at what people are doing. So mm. then the students pick up on the energy and yeah. 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 No, it's it's leadership right what, what yeah. you are talking about is leadership and practice and i think that is so powerful in that that example your example is is mm. incredibly powerful i think too you must never underestimate how powerful that is to people i think you can take Thank lessons you. from that it's not necessarily people who are in the teaching field anybody mm. and everybody can learn from that process so we had a question um in the instagram sort of q and a leading up yeah. to this um you know so obviously you teach at ALA and mm. you know one of the questions was around you know how do we instill those values that are instilled at ALA into sort of your more eurocentric school, schools mm. so mm. how do you think you know that approach should should translate across okay that's a it's a very interesting question and i can mm. see how it it could sound controversial um but at ALA um we are we try to instill certain traits within our students. I don't know if mm -hmm. there's some people here from LA, so hopefully I remember them. So there's these seven traits. The students yeah. hate these traits because we <laughs> drill it. It's like this thing that yeah. we're like, what are the <laughs> traits? What are you improving? So in, in our curriculum, in our extracurricular activities, in our programming, mm. everything ALA regarded, we, mm. are, we try to instill these seven traits in them. So we're, we're like, okay. if, you, if we can instill these five i mean these seven values in you then you mm. should be able to come out as an ethical african pan african leader so yeah. you need to be a good communicator you need to be a yeah. critical thinker you need to be mm. autodidactic obviously okay. you need to be an africanist you need yes. to be a hold on uh, collaborator you need to be a good mm. collaborator you need to be what are the other ones ethical and you need mm -hmm. to be entrepreneurial so if awesome. you have all of those traits or yeah. at least if you can at least focus on let's say because you can't be all of them but if you can focus mm -hmm. on maybe three or four of them and then develop the ones that you are really bad at so you have like a a good average of those traits then yes. you are you that is like the trademark of being a student from ALA so if That's you would good. like to apply that within your school it would be like make sure that you can cover those traits and then the thing mm -hmm. is is that you we get the students to track their growth so if you come yeah. in in your first year we say okay cool what traits do you want to develop okay yeah. first of all where do you see yourself like what are you taking from ALA and mm -hmm. what traits do you need to get to where you need to be okay really so mm -hmm. let's look at the traits that you need to work on and then every term, shame for kids, every term at the end of the term, <laughs> they have to reflect on um, what projects developed that specific trait, mm. where they were, how they've grown. Yeah. So if you can sort of um, grow, choose, one of, choose a couple of those traits, figure out, first of all, figure out where you want to be and then figure mm -hmm. out what traits you need to work on and then sort of 
create some sort of trajectory map or some five-year plan and then intentionally work towards developing those traits then that's really, basically like that's really that is really something from LA yeah that's that's really powerful actually that I mean it's that's super important to to translate those values across and to impart them into people um, yeah so let's talk implementation right so mm. we've we've touched on the concept we've mm. we've you know touched on the values and the principles behind design thinking but now let's talk implementation you know mm. how how do we best you know drive this principle as a solution based approach in Africa so how okay. do we do this? i mean what is the what is the approach in in your mind okay so the thing about design thinking that it's very um it's very practical right so yeah. when you're applying design thinking there are a couple of steps okay so mm-hmm. one you need to make sure that you are you empathize mm-hmm. two that you define your problem, so define what it is that you are trying to solve. Three, mm-hmm. you ideate. Four, you prototype, and then five, you test. But it's a non-linear process. So sometimes it will change because you realize that the user doesn't actually need this. So it's a, non, mm-hmm. it's a non-linear process. So um, how do we implement it? You just follow the steps. The beautiful thing about design thinking is that there are so many... Design thinking is like the... The name, the the main thing, and then there are different ways that you can apply yes. the ideate phase, the brain, like the empathizing phase. There's different mm. ways. There's different tools. So, um, like when I studied, when I when I learned how to design at school, they weren't like, mm-hmm. oh, you guys are learning how to do design thinking. It was just you're a designer, and this is how you solve problems. Mm. And then um, when I went, then I realized, okay, cool. This is a really cool. I found it quite efficient. So yeah. I realized that when when you empathize, that's when you're figuring out, okay, cool, who is the who is the user? I'm going to find the mm. user. What do they need? What don't they have? Like understanding who that person is, the environment, the context. Then two, and then I'm defining it, right? I'm defining what it is. So there's different activities to figure out how you define that thing. There's different tools. Mm-hmm. Then when mm-hmm. you are ideating your brainstorming, there's different ways that you can brainstorm. There's different ways that you can come up with new, new ideas. Then prototyping yeah. is making, right? So it's you can sketch an idea you can physically build something you can design something you can build something right and then testing is so important because you're testing what you've prototyped but you're testing it on your user so i Mm. think that how do we implement it you just you literally just follow the steps you literally it's amazing you just follow the steps but within those steps there are different um tools there are different tools like for example ala uses a build a tool called build but yes. there are there are so many design thinking tools, but it's just for it, but they are all as, um, grounded in those five steps. If that makes mm. sense, so you can literally you you literally just apply those steps whenever That's you're trying to solve a problem. It's not. Awesome. It's really. It's so simple. <laughs> so simple. But but incredibly powerful, right? I mean, extremely. So, sometimes you know, simplicity is power. That's what it is. Yeah. Right? It's just, yeah in those basic steps, you mm. achieve something immensely invaluable. So, I mean, you know, tell me a little bit about, so how, how would we reform our current sort of education system mm. to be able to drive these principles forward? I mean, we currently obviously have, you know, an education system that is quite uh, disparate in the sense that, you know, you have the really, really good schools, and you have the schools that don't have the resources, right? Mm. How do we how do we reform our education system to actually push these principles forward? Okay, so I, yeah, completely understand. So first, that's a really good question. I'm we're trying. I'm currently trying to figure that out. Um, so mm. I'm going to try and answer this as best as I can. I think yeah. on theory it's easier, but practically it's we're literally. I'm, li- I'm I'm literally in a project where. But I'm literally trying to figure that out now. So I think mm. with implementing it in a school system is that. Obviously, you'd apply design thinking, right? Yeah. So one step one. <laughs> you, step one. You know, I love steps. So step one would yeah. be you'd empathize. So who awesome. is so when you're creating a curriculum or you're creating mm-hmm. a school, you're creating some sort of education policy. Who are you empathizing with? So who is your user group? Who, what are your students like? So you're literally understanding them. You're going. You're having interviews with them. You are mm-hmm. trying to figure out. What do they need? What are they struggling with? Like, mm. what do they want to be? Like, you're literally, what are other people doing around them? What are people, what have people done, like, mm. um, that have similar solutions? And how, were yeah. they positive? Were they negative? What can you take from them? So you yeah. sort of, 
So you're empathizing. Okay. So you're understanding that sort of thing. And then step two would be to define. So now you define, okay, cool. This group of students or this school, this curriculum or this, whatever, whatever need this in order to blah, blah, blah. So you're defining some sort of solution. I mean, you're fine. You're defining a need statement, right? So now you know, okay, cool. This is what we actually need to do. Then what you start doing, you start creating, you start um, brainstorming. So how can we create a system or how can we make, for example, how can we make English cater for this specific student who suffers with this, who can't do this or is trying to figure out this, right? So you're literally, Mm -hmm. you're going down to the core of what the student needs and you're trying to create something that would make their experience better or actually Mm -hmm. make them benefit from the system that you're trying to create. Because ultimately Mm -hmm. education is there to equip your students. So how can you... How best would your student um, benefit from your curriculum? So now you're ideating, you're brainstorming, you're doing all the brainstorming things, sticky notes, the whole thing. Mm. Then after that, you test it. So you take it out and you test it on a couple of students. You test it, you see how they react. You don't say anything. You test it on people. You see, are you getting the outcome that you want? How do they feel about it? You listen to them. And then the the first five, ten methods, first, first five, ten prototypes you'd make, probably not be it. Probably yes. won't be the final mm. thing. Then you'll mm. go back and then you will redesign it. And you say, okay, cool. Yeah. They didn't like this. They struggle to understand this. How can we make it better? You go back, you fix yeah. it, you fix it, whatever. And then eventually you have a um, curriculum or a system. But the mm. thing is, if you're using design thinking, because remember that design thinking is human centered. If yes. you are using design thinking within the education space, um, you need to understand that um, students learn differently, different groups of students. So millennials learn in a specific way and Gen, Gen Z mm-hmm. and Gen X or whatever the group is, learn differently. So yes. the educational system will always change and adapt. And it won't just be, oh, okay, cool. Kids are using technology. We'll just put everything on an iPad. No, how mm-hmm. are they thinking? What is the user exactly. experience? How do they yeah. feel? What are they suffering yeah. with? Don't bombard. So now we're realizing don't bombard students with so many Zoom calls or Zoom meetings. How can you enhance that learning experience but it will always change because design thinking is human-centered so i think that Mm -hmm. if you if Mm -hmm. we are implementing it to educational systems especially in africa it's a lot of work because we're going to always change it but if we want our systems to be effective we have to be willing to continuously change and develop our systems does that make sense yeah absolutely and and i think you know what you're saying is so powerful in the sense the approach has to change. The approach it has always to, has to change. It always it, has to it change. It can't be a static approach. We can't be a one solution fits all. You know, even within one country, one, and within different countries in Africa, even within those different countries, you have to take culture into into perspective as well. So your your approach has to change. And I think mm-hmm. the fact that you know design thinking is human centered at its core mm-hmm. is is actually the key because that's mm-hmm. actually the key that will make it a successful principle to be implemented in African education as well. Yeah. But so within African education, you know, so how do we make this more accessible to the, le- the, the less or the, yeah. the, actually the disadvantaged, you know, communities? Mm. How do we make this sort of principle more accessible? As opposed okay. to, yeah. you know, it's available for those who have the resources, mm. it's available for those who you know, have the access, but how do we make this available to everyone? Okay, so I don't know that yet, because that's mm. my life's mission, to be quite honest. That is like my... That's amazing. <laughs> if the whole of Africa could get design thinking, we're going to be in a good space. But I think that um, we need to figure out, uh, first of all, we need to simplify the process, yeah. and uh, we need to get people to understand that it's not as complicated as it is portrayed to be and then i Mm. think that if we could show people the power of it but i think the struggle is what platform do we use so do we use education but not everybody has access to education right so if everyone Mm -hmm. had access to education then we would like put in education do we put it in infographics on posters do we put it in newspapers do we put it on the radio um Mm -hmm. I like ALA's approach in the sense that we teach, we give students the skills, we equip them with the mm-hmm. skills, and then they go on camp. So it's, there's something called Build in a Box, where we're like, okay, cool, guys, um, if you would like to, we give you a curriculum, and then we give you, mm-hmm. like, I think we give you, like, we give you money, and then 
we send kids to go and run camps yeah for like two days and then mm-hmm. they go and they book the place they partner up with people and they teach like 40 30 kids they go into like the villages and like to rural areas but remember mm-hmm. la has students from all over africa like yeah. all over africa so if we can get 30 students to go into mm-hmm. different parts of africa just imagine how much yeah like how many exactly. people unpacked it so i think mm-hmm. that's a very effective way but obviously we're not reaching everyone so yeah. i'm i'm i can't give but it's a start, right? it's, it's, it's a start it's, it's definitely start. a start yeah. exactly it's something, and it's very significant right it's exactly like you always you know we've learned to not despise the day of small beginnings, right? Exactly. It's, it's an absolute start and we, we, cannot, yeah. we cannot downplay that. But so let's talk marketing, right? How, mm. how do we change our marketing approach? Um, mm. How do we, how, how is our marketing approach supposed to change in Africa to, to yeah, enhance these mean. principles across, across, across the population? Mm. I think that what, okay. I think that if marketing doesn't, have not used design thinking all along, I think that would be mm-hmm. very strange because yeah. marketing is effectively communicating to, effectively communicating to your, your, your user group, right? If I'm mm-hmm. not mistaken. So it should be human-centered to the core. Does that make yeah. sense? So mm-hmm. if you are marketing and you're not focusing on your, on your user, then it's mm-hmm. like, what are you doing? <laughs> so I think that, I think what we've understood is that effective marketing campaigns are human centered. Yes. Makes sense. Yes. Effective yes. marketing campaigns, marketing mm. campaigns that we don't even know exist are not human centered. They're just like, here's money, do something cool, do something mm. because this is what is vibing currently, yes. or this is like the trend. But I mm. think that if marketing should use, should use design thinking as I'm, from what I understand, that's what they use to be quite honest. But I think that it's important for um, marketing firms or people that work on campaigns and things to make sure that they have identified who they're trying to target and just stick to that. Yeah. So if yeah. you look at companies like, and it will change, it will change according to regions. It will change yes. according to countries. Um, mm. But effective marketing campaigns are things like Nando's. Like Nando's has always been so amazing. Yeah. But it's because they, really they understand, did, yeah. right? And the a lovely thing about the Nando's in South Africa is that it's literally tar- targeted for us. Like we yes. get the jokes, we understand yeah. like Immediate. everything. Yeah. We we <laughs> get everything. And for um, I saw another advert. I think it was a traveling advert, but it was basically talking about the lockdown and saying that, hey, just stay at home. We're going to be okay. Like one day Mm. we'll be able to travel to Africa again. That had, it was so so, like driven around like how patriotic South Africans are in tough times. So they, they were literally, their campaigns are centered around trying to figure out, okay, cool. These are people, this is how they communicate. This is what gets them running. This is what gets them Mm. going. And this is how we encourage them. Mm. So, it would be weird. I don't, and I don't think that marketing campaigns don't use design thing. Effective marketing yeah. um, companies. Yes, yeah, effective ones. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, effective ones. Absolutely. And I think that um, in marketing, you have designers, you have a whole bunch of people who are naturally mm. taught how to use design thinking. So I think yes. it's it's literally in it. And if you go look at other countries, um, other countries like other countries in Africa, who have effective adverts, they also driven around creating good content for mm-hmm. for their people. So yeah. yeah. So I think it would be very strange. Like I don't know if I'm answering, but I think I think that they are doing it already. I think it yeah. just depends on how if you're not if they're not doing it well, it's because they're probably they've identified their problem. Maybe they mm-hmm. haven't identified their user group and mm-hmm. they therefore they don't really know who they're empathizing with. They don't know really know how to communicate to those people. Mm-hmm. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. So coming back to sort of, you know, learning, understanding design thinking, do you think mm. it can be taught to non-designers? I mean, is this, is this something which can be taught to everyone? And with that approach of teaching change, it, depending on who you teach. So if you've got a room full of engineers, for example, and uh, in the mm. next room you've got a room full of accountants, you know, mm. Can, mm. Can, they, can those same principles still come across? I definitely think that they can. Yeah. I think design thinking is just like step one, step two, step three. 
Yes. I think the difference is I think some people think that the design thinking and design principles are the same thing. Mm. Like they're not. Design principles is like tone um yeah. contrast. That's completely different. But I think that design I when I was studying I was working with a lady who was specializing in like business and another guy that was an IT and they were all doing design thinking. Um mm. we were all working together um and design thinking can work anywhere you just have to yeah. teach people the steps so yeah. you can definitely and the beauty about it is that if you because design thinking is so adaptable mm -hmm. it will work in every single space so yes. um it's interesting to see okay cool how would an engineer use design thinking here how would a teacher mm -hmm. use design thinking how would a mm -hmm. child use design thinking right mm -hmm. so that's i think that's what's very interesting because you can literally apply to any any anything and anyone yeah. can mm. learn it so i suppose that's that's part of the human centered approach right is, mm -hmm. is that in the sense that you know it's not it's not just for you know application in in one field these mm. are principles that are holistic across the board and can be applied anywhere and everywhere but so coming back to a bit of solution solution finding right what would you say is best way to to fix up to approach fixing problems it's is it regionally is it continentally nationally what would you say is sort of the human centered approach if oh. i had to keep the design thinking principles within that how do we best solve solutions how do we or rather bring solutions across mm. i think it would depend on what problem you're trying to solve and it would mm. depend on yeah depend on what problem you're trying to solve so are you trying to to solve like a South African problem? Are you trying to solve a problem in Johannesburg? What is, yeah. I think if you can identify what problem you're trying to solve, I think that you, yeah, you need to figure out. And I think the most important thing is who are you trying to solve it for? So mm. are you trying mm. to design really something good. for the, the upper class yeah. South African market, probably people who live in Cape Town? Like you need to, you need to be very specific with who you're yeah, choosing to exactly. design for. If you are specific, then you'll have an effective solution. So you, it won't be like, oh, I think it's better for you to just design for provincially or regionally or nationally. Yes. It's who are you trying to um, solve the problem for? And then from there, it will be very simple. So you need to identify your user. Who is your user group? And then you can apply it. So um, I was teaching my kids the other day and we were looking at Supreme, um, the brand Supreme and how Supreme is yes. so expensive. And there mm. was a T-shirt, just a normal white T-shirt with the red Supreme yeah, logo. Yeah, the and it, Supreme fan, yeah. Mm. So expensive. <laughs> and then, so they were like, but mom, are you saying that if we want to make money, then we have to just target rich people? I was like, no, because we were talking about Apple as well. And how yeah. Apple, like, Apple will never change its prices, but everybody will go into debt for Apple, right? So, yeah. <laughs> So they were like, that means that we can only solve problems for rich people. We're like, no, you need to figure out who your user group is. So look at McDonald's. McDonald's yeah. is not for rich people, but they mm -hmm. understood who their users were. Like people who just want to get food that's on the go, affordable. Yeah. Yeah. Rich, poor, whoever, it's just people who are looking for food on the go. That, that is yes. what their user group that's is. That's the so, concept. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So they have built their brand on truly marketing solving problem everything that they have designed mm -hmm. is built around fast food that's on, like on the go food fast food and from that's there right. mm -hmm. it's so effective right so they were mm -hmm. like oh, okay cool because at some point they were like well then we can't help back, like poor africans i'm like no yes. it's who is your user group exactly. and then design yeah. accordingly if your user group is south africans that's still quite broad so yeah. it's like what type of South Africans? So yes. it would it would just depend on, and sometimes it doesn't have necessarily have to be like South Africans. It could just be people who need, like example for McDonald's again, people who need fast food. Mm. Mm. No, that's really really good. So as a final question, um, what advice would you give to a young designer, um, you know, who's looking to pursue their passion? That you know, in the similar way that you have and. You know, I think your example is really powerful in the, in the sense that, you know, you you are busy, you, like I said, early leadership in action, right? You are busy implementing these principles and mm -hmm. make, and empowering people, more importantly, um, to use these principles in their, in their communities, yeah. in, in their homes, with their families, with their friends. What advice would you give to a young designer who says, you know, 
I'm really passionate about what I do, but just needs that extra little push or extra little bit of advice from someone who is already blazing the trail. Uh, hopefully, thank you. Um, I think that for designers or for young designers, I think that it's important to um, to figure out. So, one, if you know what you're passionate about, then that's cool. Mm. But I think that being a designer is, and I think just in general, being a human being or being a young person trying to figure out what you're trying to do, is such a roller coaster ride, right? It's mm. it's a uh, it's so hard. So I think figure out what you're passionate about in terms of, de- yeah. if you're for specifically designers, for a designer, what are yeah. you passionate about? Okay. Yeah. Um, really and then once you've figured out what that passion is about, like explore that passion. So figure out what does this look like here? What yeah. does this like here? Mm-hmm. Expose yourself, expose really yourself good. to people, to mentors, to um, free courses or non-free courses or, um, YouTube tutorials, like just ex- yeah. expose yourself to things that would sort of strengthen your passion. Because then I think that when you expose yourself to those things, um, you're, you're fine. You're, you begin to refine it and you yes. become more niche based. So really I think for me, it was like, okay, cool. I've always loved creative things when I was young, right? So mm-hmm. I didn't know what that was. One day, like at some point I was like, oh, no, I'm just going to be like the African Anna Wintour. That was like my goal. I just wanted to do a Pan-African yeah. book. That was like a dream in high school. And then I was like, oh, okay, cool. Maybe not, des- maybe not fashion. Because pe- everyone thought, every- some people still think I'm a fashion designer. I'm like, no, guys. I like fashion, adore it. But So it's always been Pan-African something, right? So yes. then you, you need to just explore it and just give yourself the time. You're probably not going to figure it out. I feel like I'm still being refined i feel like i'm mm. literally still being mm. refined at some point i'm like no we need to create a platform we need to have like yeah. conferences and, blah. and now i'm like no i think education is the way I'm, i think education is definitely like what i would like to do like education is mm. something that i'm passionate about and i think that you can link other things so like for example i love design um i also love young people so much like i work like i served that youth for so long so mm. design plus like youth and then i love teaching so i used to teach like kids as well so yeah. i put design in and then i got kids and then i got like teaching so and, i have um, different passions <laughs> from different things and it's yeah. helping me refine into, into it's it's allowed me to to be refined so give it's yourself really the time literally Mm -hmm. give yourself the time and expose yourself throw yourself in the deep end my mother always Mm -hmm. says it you're young throw yourself on the deep end i'll put people like um work for people that you Mm -hmm. look up to literally Mm -hmm. work for people that you look up to and figure out why do you look up to this person sometimes i look up to people not because they're designers but because of their work ethic or because of how they treat people because of Mm -hmm. how they lead so okay cool i like this about them let me figure it out and then see how you can put design into that. Yeah. That's really, that's really, really profound. I think, you know, there's, there's quite a few things there that you said that, you know, resonated, you know, about, I think, dreams evolving, right? Um, you know, that your dream that you start with isn't necessarily yeah. the full picture, right? <laughs> allow, allow your dreams to evolve, right? And, you know, the point about being patient with yourself. That's mm. incredibly powerful, right? Because you you don't you don't you don't wake up the finished article, right? You mm-hmm. you like you said, you continue to be refined, you continue to grow, you continue to learn. And so I mean I'm curious, in teaching, right? Mm. Uh, where you impart lessons to to students, do you feel I'm sure you do feel an incredible amount of growth in that, in in that imparting of of those lessons of the principles of the values. Mm. How is that process for you? Do, you? do you feel those those sort of values becoming even more centered within yourself as well as you teach them across? Mm, definitely. That's a brilliant question. I think that teaching is actually so hard. <laughs> like, yeah. It's so hard. And it's, and it's very... Teachers it, yeah, right? it is. It is. My lecturers used to say they used to get nervous sometimes mm. when they would get into class and i'd be like wow you guys are so scary you guys are cool <laughs> it is 
you Definitely. are literally just putting yourself out there and it's very you you become very vulnerable so yeah. one thing i learned that um there will be no perfect class okay mm. so there will be a good class but there will never be a perfect class and i think yeah. that when you when you teach you're not teaching because you're trying to sound smart it's not about complex terms and using all these fancy words or fancy mm-hmm. you need, you're trying to get students to understand a concept right so yeah. I think when you go into teaching or when you teach I think it's one trying to figure out okay cool what do I want my kids to leave with like what mm. what 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 do I want them to leave with and then real like taking it literally it's not a, it's literally not about you it's not about yeah. you so yeah. and then being patient with yourself and trying to figure figure that out so when you i know like when i prep for teaching it's like a cool about this concept and i don't even know what this is so it's like yeah. trying to figure out okay cool now i understand yeah. this how can i get my kids to understand whatever it is that i'm teaching and yes. then um simplifying it for them and contextualizing really it right? that's not easy that yeah is that is not easy. easy yeah 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 <laughs> it takes it takes a lot to simplify a concept such that people can understand it right exactly. there's incredible power there's incredible power in, in being able to do that so yeah. that's, that's why i think it's 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 also you know a really good space of growth as well for you as you go through that process so mm. it's definitely not easy at all i no, i i can, it is, i can imagine it is, and the thing is like <sighs> I always say this like okay cool I know what okay so so you simplify then I know okay cool this is what I want them to learn but how mm-hmm. I need to be intentional about what I would like them to take outside of the classroom all right so yes. if I'm preaching take what you've learned to the classroom and take it out in the com- to the communities how like I need to show them how to do that right so yes. yeah now you like you have to give them resources and show them what it looks like or show them what other people have done inspire them mm-hmm. and then be patient with them as well so it's the yeah. same thing so it's like and then recognize where they don't understand things recognize when they're tired like read mm-hmm. so i think it's a same thing so it's like being patient it mm-hmm. is simplifying things it is getting to understand them as mm-hmm. individuals um mm-hmm. and i think it's i think yeah definitely being patient with yourself and then i think that teaching has really taught me how to not i think my identity has been like solidified i think and still and will continue awesome. to be solidified because mm-hmm. i i don't think that you can teach and not have a clue of who you are as an individual yeah. because it's yeah. kids can read you and teenagers yeah. and young people are extremely <laughs> critical right yeah. so babies and stuff are nice but like <laughs> young like youth stop so, stop so, so, yeah so can't like, yeah right so and then if i'm teaching you values and things in class mm. and i step outside the class am i practicing what i teach yeah. so it's always yeah. that that like yeah, yeah stuff <laughs> being a teacher stuff to me that and but and i love, thought that, you know I massive it. massive respect to all all people in in the education sphere. Yeah. But thank you thank you so much. I think this is really 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 inspiring and I think um thoroughly educational as well. I think you know, there's a lot of people who might have watched this who probably came in not knowing what the concept was even about but have left mm. I think really empowered, enriched, inspired as well and I think with a lot of understanding, right? Mm. So what we just spoke about at the end about you know simplifying a concept to help people to understand it is exactly what you've just done in the stuff right <laughs> that's exactly what you've just done i'm you glad i'm glad to simplify the concept for anybody and everyone no matter yeah. the profession no matter the discipline no matter the field to be able to understand the principles the concepts the values behind design thinking mm-hmm. but more importantly to actually understand how we can implement it and I think you know what you said is like I was just like wow that is really powerful in the sense that it's an adaptive approach it's not it's 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 not a this is the way we do it and that's it right because that's right. often part of the problem with with policies or things that we try to implement is they're very rigid what i love about this is that it's a very adaptive approach it's an approach that says actually who are we dealing with right which cultures are we dealing with what values and principles does that culture have you know who 
who who are we interacting with the human centered approach i think is something that is so important and if only you know people saw that and understood that i think you know the 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 sky really is the limit for the continent and for every nation for every culture for every town for every city for every village within it right if if those are the principles that we would uh, that we would implement so please keep doing what you're doing you're inspiring an incredible amount of people thank uh, you thank you thank you of, of small beginnings i'm sure it is just a small beginning compared to where you're going to end up so i'm sure we all are really excited to see um what the future holds but uh thank you so much for uh, coming on to the show for educating us for inspiring us i think this has been really really impactful so thank you so much Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything that you're doing and for creating platforms for young people to have impactful and interesting and empowering conversations. I'm so Thank excited. You so I'm so proud of you. Um and Thank I know that so this is the beginning of like so many other things, right? So yeah. hopefully um yeah. this I think that I feel like young people always feel like oh, okay cool I have this desire or I do this and mm. they don't really know how to start so this is an example of of how how you could do it so like just you start, want people to yeah. have conversations just yeah. start you want to teach people just like if you want to make yeah. a cake make a cake if you want to do anything just just do anything so yeah <laughs> and like yeah. you said hopefully um I don't know I just want to see a bit of Africa I think yeah. that's yeah That's and I think you know many many people watching this would agree with me that we we should definitely have a, a version two of this of this chat one day. Yes, yes. yeah. I want to talk about Africa. Like, <laughs> yeah, we need it. We like, we definitely didn't touch on everything. Policy. Right? And we we we've left we've left some things for version two, right? We, so yes. we we definitely going to do that again again very soon. But until then, Sanyu, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank that, you. Uh, you stay safe. that you stay healthy you wash your hands do all those things <laughs> sanitize you know <laughs> and sanitize absolutely <laughs> but until then thank you so much once again thank you thank you for the rest of the afternoon you too you too have a lovely lovely evening and look after yourself Alrighty. thank you sanyu thank Cheers. you bye bye all right guys thank you so much well wow, that was really really good i hope that you enjoyed that um watch out uh, for this episode will come out on the uh, YouTube channel um something quite interesting is also coming up quite soon in terms of the platforms which um impactful conversations is going to be available so uh do keep a keen eye on uh, my Instagram as well as my uh, Facebook page as well as well as the YouTube channel as well um But yeah, really excited as well uh for episode 6 next weekend. Um going to announce that very soon. Um yeah, hope that you are too. But until then, thank you so much for all the support. Hope you guys have been impacted. Hope you felt uh really inspired today by what Sonia had to say and the principles that she had to impart with us. But until then, stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands and sanitize as well. And we'll catch you again at the next live. Cheers. Bye-bye.